So all I want to do now is finish on everybody's favorite topic, which is a bit of shading. So I'm going to get to this. I've covered the main points that I wanted to, which is the key physics inside of the cell and how come the cell works. But I want to finish putting it together just to finish up the whole talk. So each solar cell only contributes about a half a volt. So we put them together in series. Remember, we did this before. So I'm going to draw my curves now based on connecting solar cells in series. So when I connect things in series, I add them voltage-wise, right? At a certain current, add the voltage. At a certain current, add the voltage. That's what it means to connect things in series. The current has to be the same. So if I add another cell together, I, at this current level, I add the voltage. At this current level, I add the voltage. And that's how I create a curve that is the sum of multiple cells connected together in series, right? At every current level, I add the voltage across. That's how I draw the curve. Don't look up from voltage, look across from current. And at the current level, add voltage, 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 and you end up with the result. It's going to be important because that's how it's going to affect the curve shape. So now I'm going to create a whole module. I start with one cell, one curve. I add another cell, I add another cell in series. Another cell, add another cell in series, right? If I have 20 cells in series, I have a group of 20. Push my curve out. Another group of 20 and another group of 20 could make a, a module with 60 cells. And that ends up with the voltage curve of the module, which is always made up of a bunch of cell curves. Okay, That's how we get the module curve. So if the open circuit voltage of one cell was 0.66, after 60, the open circuit voltage of the module would be 40. If the max power voltage was 50, 0.53, the max power voltage of the entire module would be at around 32, let's say. Okay. And one interesting point here, I can create an inverter IV curve. Really, I call it an IV envelope, right? And I can do that based on the parameters of a typical inverter. I can have a minimum voltage operating for the inverter and a maximum voltage. This gives me my operational window that the inverter is designed to work in. And it will have, let's say, a minimum max power tracking point and a maximum max power tracking point. And then I can connect these with an envelope curve that's defined by the power, the maximum power of the inverter, divided by the minimum max power voltage, and the power divided by the max power voltage. And in between, I'd have a curve of constant power linking them. And so the blue curve creates an envelope in which the inverter can operate, right? All those voltage current points. So it's not like the IV curve that was a select series of IV points that made a line, it's a region. It's an envelope. Anywhere under this blue envelope, the inverter can operate. And so this leads me to matching the number of modules I put in series with my inverter. If I can get my array curve to somehow fit within the envelope of the inverter, it'll work. Okay. But now, let's introduce some shading and see what the heck's going on there. And I call it the dolphin nose because it looks like a dolphin nose to me, I think. Okay, so this is introducing something different that we haven't talked about yet. We've all been focused on the front here, which is the region of power generation with a positive current and a positive voltage and a positive power, okay? But what about back here? There is a region of power dissipation where I have positive currents, but they're operating at negative voltages and that results in negative power. In other words, power being taken away from the circuit instead of being generated. And I can go back far enough in my solar cell <clears throat> so that my IV curve actually explodes on me. And this is dangerous. <clears throat> this is the reverse breakdown point of a solar cell. This is where basically a diode would break down. And this is bad. It can actually catch fire, it can explode, it can do all kinds of bad things. Typically for a cell, it might be back here around 15 or 18 volts. It's not usually measured by manufacturers, but it can be determined, but it's way back here at around 15 volts. We don't want to let any cells that are shaded operate there. That's the key point. So remember, we're talking about cells in series and how we add uh, voltage-wise, looking at different current levels. Now I'm gonna shade a cell. So I'm gonna introduce some shading onto one of my cells. And it's going to end up looking like this, right? There's the curve that's lowered down, lower, lower light level on the cell. 
So the curve goes down and there's the reverse part. It's going all the way back. And then way back here is breakdown. So if I was to connect these, if I'm adding them together, let's look at this new point, the short circuit point of my shaded cell. The, the shaded cell can add voltage at these low current levels. At this level, it can add voltage. At this low level, it can add voltage. But finally, I get to a point where it adds no voltage. And that gives me my final point here. And the shaded cell can drag back all the other cells to create a new short circuit point that's lower than my original one, all the way back here. Why is that? Let's look at that point. At that level, the good cells, at that current level, they can add voltage, add voltage, which would normally put my point way out here. But now, my shaded cell, being forced to operate at that new current level, will operate, but at a negative voltage. No thank you. So that negative voltage counters the other ones, and that point is chosen such that that negative voltage equals all the positive voltage of all the other cells connected together to it, so that the resulting effect is dragging them all back to zero. Pretty bad, but that's how it happens. So that's how a shaded cell can drag down the curve of a number of cells connected together. So now let's put that together. Let's take about what would be a good cell and put in a shaded cell. Remember, it can be operated back there. Now that's reverse breakdown voltage. I don't wanna go back there. But if I do, this one cell can contribute voltage here, so it adds voltage here. But at this new short circuit level, it's not adding. And then it can continue operating in reverse all the way back to where it would break down. If we didn't protect the module and we allowed this cell to be operated at some high current level like this, it would operate here, it could break down, catch on fire, and we'd be in trouble. So we introduced bypass diodes, yay. And this is what it means to introduce a bypass diode. I'm gonna look at a group of 20. Let's say you have 20 cells protected by a bypass diode. It's connected in parallel with the group, not series, parallel. And this is what it looks like when I connect a diode in parallel with a group of cells. It does like this, boop. I'm adding them together. So I have my 20 solar cells, and then I have my bypass diode, the effect of which is effectively limiting my reverse operation to just the voltage of that diode, which is about 0.7. So I'm limiting my voltage of the entire group to minus 0.7 and not more. It effectively makes the shape of my group of 20 and diode, the system of the 20 cells and the diode, now looks like the blue dotted line. That's the curve. So now let's put that into application. If we shade a cell, in the group of 20, and it does, like we know, drag down, that one shaded cell can drag down the output of all the other 20 cells, it drags them down. But instead of continuing to drag them down in reverse, now at current levels above what that shaded cell could do, remember that new short circuit point, at current levels above that, it's limited to 0.7. The excess current above what the cells can produce is carried by the diode. It's called a bypass diode. The current bypasses the cells. This level of current from this level up bypasses the cells and only goes through the diode. And let's put that together and finish up by looking at the beneficial effect. So if I was to operate at this high current level, my shaded cell could be pushed to reverse breakdown, and that's very bad. But now, if I introduce diodes into my system, now I replace that group of 20 with an effective curve that looks like this. So there's my, there's my 20 with some shade, right? It's dragged down. But the effect is that the, the reverse voltage is only limited. So now the effect of these 20 and these 20 plus the shaded 20 creates a curve that, yes, it has this voltage at low levels, but at high levels above here, see, it's kind of hard to show, but there's only a drop of 0.7 right there. The voltage loss that I lose is limited to my 20 cells, unfortunately, plus then only 0.7 more. And I stay away from my reverse breakdown voltage points and prevent my modules from actually being damaged. So I just wanted to get that in as a final point about 
uh, IV curves. So now when you connect it to uh, an inverter, let's say, it looks at max power operation points and where it would have normally operated there, now it operates here. And it can operate at this high current level without reverse breakdown because remember, it's being protected by the bypass diode. 